Welcome to the TAF Hub. This is a brand new show brought to you by TAF Africa Global to educate you on real estate business and all the information you need to know about real estate. After 45 years of construction and real estate development in eight African countries, it is time to share my experience and it can only be done in the TAF Hub. We will be inviting experts who will give you facts and the right regulations on real estate development. Join us every week on our social media platforms for an exciting show. You can also watch us on JRTS TV every Sunday at 8.30 p.m. As you know, the TAF Hub is one of the initiatives under the TAF Africa Foundation. And we are trying to inspire the youth of this country. We cannot do all this by ourselves. So we look out to Gambians who are doing so well in the diaspora and about common holidays to the Gambia. If you know anybody that can inspire the youth that is doing so well in their own areas, please send us an email on this email that's shown on the, the screen. Tell us, uh, how has TAFIS contributed to skills and vocational learning um, in the Gambia? I think first with orientation and perception. So when our students come into the Vocational Training Institute and the Skill Center, one of the first things we do is we have an orientation where we have a conversation with them about multiple intelligence. You might have academics, you might have social, you have different ways of being intelligent. Uh, mathematics, measurement, and so on. We expose them to all of those and tell them that it is the system that has failed them and not them that have failed the system by not knowing that they have different intelligences. And so that's really important. The second thing we help them to understand and really hold on to is the fact that they are going to be the biggest employers in this country. Mm -hmm. So whereas somebody else can sit in an office, you are actually going to be employing a whole bunch of people, particularly in Africa, particularly given the, the numbers of young people we have. And so once they have a good grasp of who they are and what they can do, it then has to be backed up by action. And so, for example, when the COVID happened, when COVID first started, we had them make masks and make soap. And then we donated a whole bunch of them to offices around the country. And we were able to show them that were, as other people were pulling back, they were at the forefront. Mm -hmm. And then also that they can help take care of their families. So as soon as they start, whatever they learn, they start leveraging it in making money so they can start contributing to their own school fees and then to helping their families. Hey. What I try to do in the Gambia is create the environment that I think will nurture the type of young people that Africa needs. If you look at the youth population in Africa, that is where the future lies. Uh, maybe other people say it, but for us, this is the future. Um, and so Africa does not lack educated people. Um, we don't lack the environment. We don't lack the resources, including the natural resources. What we lack is the integrity between what we say and what we do. And that can only be done in example. You have to do that. So if you believe in independence, if you believe that we are noble at our core, if you believe that we can solve problems even when we disagree by being courteous, if you believe that we have to look beyond ourselves to be of service, and that is where happiness lies, and if you believe that we have to be able to take information and use it and refine it and learn as we go on, then you start from very young. And you can't start younger than women because they're the ones that get pregnant. And whether the baby is a male or a female, the mother is the primary educator of that child. So if you want generational change, whatever you teach the mother, she teaches all the children immediately and they grow up with those qualities. And in essence, the idea is that education is the key and service is the key. And service and education, when you combine them and you look at them in terms of health and you look at them in terms of agriculture, people have something to eat, people are healthy, people can think, they can learn together, then development continues in the right way. 
and that African children cannot do that without knowing where they come from. So looking at where you come from, using what you have, where you are to build what you want, is really the experiment that is Starfish. So taking young people and having them come together and be of service to humanity, looking at what they have, who they are, where they come from, and then using that to make their communities better, no matter what age they are, and continuing it for a lifetime, is really the investment that is Starfish for the world. We raise young people who know where they come from, what they have, and what they can leverage to develop Africa and to be of service to humanity, but to be proud of who they are and to do what they can to make the world a better place. Hi guys, I don't know whether you've heard about Starfish um, uh, in the Gambia, in Lamin village. Uh, it was started by a lady. That's where we're going today for the Tap Hub. We're going in to visit um, uh, the facilities. Hello Uncle Tap, welcome Hi, to hi, thank you. What's your name? My name is Woody Jaita and I'm one of the mentors here. Okay, so you're a mentor of Starfish? Yes. Okay, great, great. Alright, so I'm going to take you guys on a tour mm -hmm. and we will start with the library. So we are going to have someone talk to you about the library, our library program and some of the projects we do at the library. So this is our library and Hadige. So welcome to the Staffers International Library. I am Hadi Gay. I am one of the mentors at Staffers International and also the ICT coordinator. So the Staffers International Library is an open library for everybody in the community to come and access books. So this is the first ever la open community library at Lamen and also in the Gambia. So our goal is everybody from the community come, come here, use the library and also some of the activities we have in the library are extracurricular activities. Like we have poetry sessions in the library, we have reading and writing and also we open the library normally because most of our students go to school so normally after school they come to the Staffers International Library to have after school classes that the mentors teach so some of these classes are English, math, SAS, basically the subjects they are doing at school and another aspect of what we do in the library is ICT so I'm the STEAM coordinator in Staffers International so this club, so the STEAM club is basically a club to help girls to venture into ICT, to venture into the tech world, to show them that. Excellent. They what, what are these? These are gallons, huh? You do gallons. Yeah. You know yes. what this reminds me? Gallons. What time do you do gallons? Christmas. Christmas. We used to do it in primary school. You yes, know? So we had a like a two week break. So when they were coming back, we did this decoration. Yeah, they are called gallants, you know. So uh, so when we were young in primary school, we used to look forward to doing this. But yeah. that's the time there's no longer nothing that much of anything yeah. academic or educational. Yeah. But play play. Wow. So you cut and do it. Do the gallants. Yes. And well done. Great. One project that we also do at the library is the adult literacy program. So okay. that is for adults in the community that do not have the chance to go to school. Yeah. So this is the um, business center and it represents one of our qualities, independence. Mm -hmm. So we encourage our students to start up their small business so they can help themselves to not fully depend on their parents but to also provide their basic needs for themselves. And wow. this is um, some of the skill center students that are doing... Um, what is this called? Embroidery? Embroidery. Embroidery, yeah. Lovely, thank you so much. Really good. And you knit, huh? So you can knit. So what are you knitting? It's a crochet, but what, is it a scroll or what? Hey, that's a knitting, what's it called? Knitting pin or so? Crochet pin. Crochet pin. Yeah. Wow, yeah. Well, I'm going to go So we have the gazebo, so this is usually for students when they come from school, they can come and rest before it's time for our Hello. activities. How are we doing? We have some of the library kids. And okay. we're going to have made one out of you about the health program at Starfish. Okay, all right, okay. So Quick I, one, yeah. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm yeah. one of the mentors in the health program. Yeah. And so I'm just basically going to be sharing about our goals. Mm -hmm. And one is to um, have a Starfish clinic because mm -hmm. we believe health is one way we can impact the Gambia. And so we have been working towards that and so we do a lot of community outreaches and sensitizations and banter bars and the reason what we are about to have is a breast cancer awareness because it's breast cancer awareness month and so we'll be having guests here and also we'll be going out to the community to talk to them 
So basically, these are things we are working towards, and we hope that one day we'll be able to have our clinic because we already have staffish alumni and um, staffish mentors who are already um, going to school as nurses and doctors. Others have already graduated and are ready to come back. And Excellent. Come. Good so, job. Yeah, thank you, basically. Hello. How are we doing? Good. Thank you. You know, one thing that I always carry in my bag is this. The tip. Really? Yeah. I'll show you now. You know that one here in my bag. I This is I always carry it yeah, because I met some people. Yeah, I'm into, I'm into the showing. Do you see the outfit I wear? Huh? Yeah, some of them I design it. Oh, so you design it? Well, one of the things I do. <laughs> These are some of the products they make. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's nice, lovely, huh? level two yeah so if you finish level one from the first classroom then you move to this one this is like the level two yeah, classroom for yeah, all right okay, right. So, we're going to the for this class. wow oh really okay yes. lovely <laughs> Wow, Mohammed, you're the, you the teacher here. Yeah. This is my area. I love this. You love it. Thank you. What, what, are, what are the skills um, uh, the students are provided with? So they do um, hairdressing, they do embroidery, they do sewing, they do tie-dye and batik. They do hotel management, mm -hmm. hospitality, they do bakery, and they do hot foods as well as cold foods. So those they do right there. But added to that, we also have mathematics and English and business classes as well. So that what they're learning, when they go to sew clothes or whatever they do, somebody puts a contract in front of them, we want them to be able to read the contract, understand the contract, know what they're going to sign on into. But all, all, all these that you've said are, are, are female dominated. I mean, uh, how, how about male? Is it, do you also have male students? Or Absolutely. Not? So the so. skill center is both males and females. And part of our focus has also been for those people who have gone the back way mm -hmm. and then come back. How do we put them into the system? Mm -hmm. Because they have also been exposed to why it is important to have a skill and leverage that skill. So our teachers are half male, half female, and then the students, we have a lot of males as well. So but what, what percentage? Male we have, women? I would say the, the teachers are almost 50-50, mm -hmm. and the students are 75, 25. 75 female? Female, and, yeah. Oh, okay, that, I'm happy with that. Yeah. You know, you know, as you know me, I'm very female biased, right. huh? and yeah. I don't, I'm not shy about it. Yeah. But tell me, why is it important to allow young people to learn to lead? and actually give them the button to lead while you lead? Well, I think that it's, a, it's, a, it's an investment. When you make an investment, you want to see it working. To just wait and say, well, I don't know. At the end of the day, let me know what I have made is a huge risk to take and definitely not worth it and not the smart way to go. So if these young people are the custodians of our future, mm -hmm. then we want to make sure right now that they have the qualities. And how do we know they have the qualities if we don't put them in the field? And most importantly, if we don't allow them to make mistakes and we correct them in real time. Because if we don't do that, by the time we're old and they're making the mistakes, they're making those mistakes on us and future generations. Mm -hmm. Whereas while we are vigorous enough, we can actually lead side by side with them and show them that they can do it. 
and we can see that they can do it. So it's Excellent. critical. Excellent. It's critical. Now, now you are in you are, you are in Lamin. Yes. Uh, you know, but what's the plan of sustaining the chapter program in all all regions of the country? Right. So we, I am in Lamin, mm. but the students that have come through, we've had at least a thousand students go through Starfish. Mm -hmm. So the, some of them have gone back to their villages to start chapters. So we have eight chapters across the country. We have two chapters in Jara. We have Jara Soma, Jara Bureng. We have chapters in Fuladu, in Basse, um, in Bansang, and then closer to the Combos as well. So the idea is that when you think about development and leadership, it doesn't make sense for somebody from another place to come and lead you in development in your own place. Mm -hmm. So in as much as Starfish has worked really well in Lamin, that's where I'm from and I really understand Lamin. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make too much sense for me to go to Fuladu and try to implement Starfish there because Starfish in Fuladu mm -hmm. should look different from Starfish in Lamin. Yeah. And so we're not hoping everybody comes to Lamin. We're hoping to give these young people the skills and have them go back to their communities and looking at the context of their realities, set up something where they can get the foundation from Starfish and the support from Starfish, but it would reflect the realities of the communities they come from. Excellent. Some of the programs we do at Starfish, um, it's the community college that we do here, which we open the space for outsiders to register and also some staffers mentors also to register to take part in learning some of the leadership skills that they need in their life. We also have ABE program which is like a business course stomach right, that we do at staff is here and I was part of the first batch of um, ABE students and I graduated and I passed and have my um, diploma in it and one of my most one of the activities or one of the projects at Starfish that I'm very 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 passionate about mm -hmm. and that keeps me you know it makes me happy is the our chapter programs because we have a lot of mentors here and these mentors go into their different communities that they are, they come from to go and start a mini starfish there. So we have about eight chapters, one in Jara Soma, Jara Bureng, Foni, um Jara Nyani Sukuta, Basia Bansang. And then when the mentors go into these communities, they are able to create safe spaces for these girls because most girls in the rural areas, they don't have like mentors in their lives like we do. Because for me and other mentors at Starfish, when we started um, as Starfish students, we had mentors until after we graduated high school and all of that. So we also, Starfish gave us the platform and the opportunity to go into the, um, the village to have a mini Starfish at Starfish. And my, personally, my chapter is at Jara Soma. And whenever I go to Jara Soma, it's always a beautiful experience. These people treat me so nice. And the, the girls actually created that space for me, that safe space for me. Okay, that's a good one to start with. So you cut and then you do what? <laughs> yeah? You shave it? Yes. Excellent. Lovely. Well done. Great job, huh? Lovely, huh? Wow. Ah, this day is where the money is there. The, the human <laughs> hair and so on. I enjoy one of the TikTokers, uh, somebody who TikTok about human hair that is costing eighty thousand dollars, yeah. and it busted the, the TikTok. <laughs> I love this one. Uh, one no, 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 no. Uh -oh. Do not criticize what you do not understand. Yeah. If you can dream it, you can do it. Dream big. Yeah, That's one of my philosophies. I mean, tell me, how has um, Staffy's library um, uh, impacted uh, the community? Well, there's a good history about that. When I first started Starfish, I had 7,000 books mm -hmm. and enough money to just build a one-room library and no money to pay a librarian. And so everybody kept saying to me, well, you can't have a library without a librarian. And I thought, if we're going into a community, instead of assuming that they're corrupt, let's give them the best and assume that they can be custodians of their own development. So we stamped all the books and then we put them in the library and we told all the kids, these are your books, they're for you, they're for the community. So when you see it anywhere in any home, you can bring it back to the library. Mm -hmm. And then two years later, 70% of the books were still in the library. Wow. Nobody had stolen all the books. Yeah. So we started in the community with a, a, a 
conversation about trust mm -hmm. and then actions showcasing trust. Mm -hmm. And then after that, the community has rallied around us to support us. So the kids can come there, the parents know that their kids are going to a good place. Mm -hmm. They're getting a free education. Well, it's not free. They're paying back the education through service and mm -hmm. through bettering the community. So it's a really good interaction and mutual um, symbolic understanding as well as a give and take a give and take between us and the community. Excellent. Well, but what, 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 are, what are the future plans for the library, uh, the art gallery, ITC program, and all the departments uh, at Starfish? So somebody asked me the question, what does Starfish not do? Yeah. Because we have so many programs. If you come to the uh, campus, you have the skill center, you mm -hmm. have sewing, you have embroidery, you have debate, you have the kindergarten kids, you have the art gallery, and so on. The idea really is to have a place where anything that a child needs to grow into a wholesome human being mm -hmm. that can foremost be of service to humanity, mm -hmm. that can look at themselves and say, what skills, what talents do I have? Mm -hmm. And how do I leverage that to helping other people and serving other people? Then Starfish is a safe place for you to come to develop those qualities, to nurture those qualities, and to have the family support you need for it. So when it comes to the library, even though we have a physical library at Starfish, mm -hmm. we do library programs where we go to villages and teach civic education and give out books and do reading programs. When it comes to the art program, we have artists come to Starfish, artists who don't have um, a place in their homes to do art and paint and draw. Mm. They can come and sit at the art gallery and draw. And somebody says, what do they get out of it? Or what does Starfish get out of it? Well, what Starfish gets out of it is if you're passing by and you see an artist, it becomes part of your psyche. Mm -hmm. Art doesn't seem so far removed from you. And you can come and talk to the artist and they can mentor you. Mm -hmm. And the sewing and the embroidery and so on is closely connected to people you can access and talk to. And each one of the things that we do, people are always saying, well, you know, why are you doing these things for free? It's not for free. It's mm -hmm. a pay it forward. Mm -hmm. They come and they learn and they get nurtured and we expect them to go out into the community mm -hmm. and we hold them to it. You have to do many, many hours of service and we supervise those mm -hmm. to make sure that you're actually giving back. So. Oh, excellent. But what are, what are some of the projects the Skill Center is looking forward uh, to, to implementing? We expect to do skills training up to the master's level. Wow. So right now we're um, connected to NACA and accredited by NACA, and we're doing this at level one and level two. But what we're hoping is to do metal work, woodwork. We're hoping to do solar training. We're hoping we're building a restaurant and a salon so that our students can actually have the practical experience in the village. They don't have to go somewhere else to get that experience. And then how are they going to leverage it in different villages around the country that have the river right there? If you want to put up a spa, what would that look like in the village setting and so on and so forth? So we are looking at working with the Ministry of Higher Education and having a skill center. If we say skills are equal to any other area, we want to do that up to the master's level. So you can come in and be a tailor and have a master's degree in sewing and design. You can be a chef, you can try to be a restaurateur, any of those things, and you can hold your head up high and be competitive anywhere around the world. So those are the plans. Hi guys, you know today I'm going to say this in Wolof. Uh, and that is what this lady represents. I think every Gambian or anybody anywhere in the world should take some time and come and visit what this dynamic lady has done here. This is called Starfish. And what she has done over the years is to empower those who are not empowered, the young ones, ladies and young guys here in Lamin. What I saw today, impressed is an understatement. I am impressed. Thank You've you. You've done a good job. <laughs> Thank you. Well done. Thank so you. let us spread this the world all over. Starfish the Gambia is an example of somebody who's selfless, somebody who has done a lot for those who are underprivileged, and those who needed help. And she was there to help. She didn't have to do it, but she did it. This is what we should do in this small country of ours. Empower those who are underprivileged that need help. Thank you very much. Thank and you. I'm saying it on behalf of all Gambians. Thank you. Thank you. 
As you know, the TAF Hub is one of the initiatives under the South Africa Foundation. And we are trying to inspire the youth of this country. We cannot do all this by ourselves. So we look out to Gambians who are doing so well in the diaspora and about common holidays to the Gambia. If you know anybody that can inspire the youth that is doing so well in their own areas, please send us an email on this email that's shown on the, the screen. Welcome to the TAF Hub. This is a brand new show brought to you by TAF Africa Global to educate you on real estate business and all the information you need to know about real estate. After 45 years of construction and real estate development in eight African countries, it is time to share my experience and it can only be done in the TAF Hub. We will be inviting experts who will give you facts and the right regulations on real estate development. Join us every week on our social media platforms for an exciting show. You can also watch us on JRTS TV every Sunday at 8.30 p.m.